Welcome, everybody, to episode 359 of WordPress Weekly for Wednesday, July 3rd. I almost said 4th, 2019. See, I'm thinking ahead already. I just I want to get to the weekend, please. I'm your host, Jeff Chandler, joined by John James Jacoby, who is Hi. with us after two weeks of no showing. Uh, but uh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're out doing your travels. And uh, Malcolm Peralta did a great job subbing in for you. And I don't know if you listen to any of those episodes on the way home, but. Uh, he, he, he put out the offer that he's available at any time should the need <laughs> come up. You know, I don't think, I don't think I've met Malcolm in person. I don't, if I did, I feel bad that I don't remember, but like, uh, he does a good job. He does better than I do. So I don't know why you have me here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, so I don't I mean, make if Malcolm's me question, thing, don't make I mean, me question my decisions. <laughs> If every episode that I'm on the show doesn't already make you question it, Jeff, then I feel like you never will. <laughs> oh, boy. So great to have you back. Uh, we'll get into be back. sort Thanks. of your review of uh, WordCamp Europe uh, near the yeah, later yeah. on in the show. But I'm looking forward to today's guest and the topic mm -hmm. today. Her name is Jill mm -hmm. Binder. She is the founder and chief consultant and trainer at Diverse Speakers in Tech. Uh, she leads the diverse speaker training group in the WordPress.org community team, which encourages underrepresented people to speak at WordPress events. And she also helped organize the first buddy camp and for three years co-organized WordCamp Vancouver. Jill, thanks a lot for being on our show today. Thanks so much for inviting me to be here. I'm really excited to be here. All right. Hi, so we've been, working on, we've been working on this for a little while. <laughs> Sorry, John, I cut you off. <laughs> no, it's okay. David and I go way back from the uh, okay. camp that I organized, helped to organize in 2012. And I'm meeting mm -hmm. Jeff. Well, we've been talking for a while about being on the show, and I'm actually talking with you now. Uh, it's awesome. Exactly. I'm so happy to see you again or hear you again for our listeners. Man, Buddy Camp Vancouver was a long time ago. It was. But I remember that. That was can, the first. We can this later. It was the first. Uh, and wasn't that uh, Whistler? It, Vancouver, or, actually. Vancouver. Vancouver, Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. There's some other I mean, Buddy Pretz event that I think was up at Whistler. It was that the was first the, one. Uh, yeah, that was the 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 one the 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 memory that sticks out in my mind is of uh, of, of me, Paul, my, myself, Paul Gibbs, Andy Peatling, uh, Ray, and Boone. Uh, I think Boone, maybe not Boone, but Matt also. Uh, all of us got together and got to talk about Buddy Press and all. That was a good time. It was a lot of fun. And by the way, 2012 uh, at WordCamp Vancouver, Sarah Gooding was there, and she was actually a presenter at that WordCamp. Oh, it was the yeah. first WordCamp. That's right. Uh, it's a, wow. a little bit of a little bit of history there, pop quiz history. If you're ever on <laughs> WordPress Jeopardy, but Jill, this is the first time uh, of of having you on the show. And what I like to do with uh, with everybody is learn about their WordPress origin story. So how did you get involved and started with WordPress? Sure, yeah, so how did I start with WordPress? It was back in, I was doing a college program in 2010 and 2011, and my practicum that I got at the end of it was in WordPress. And we kind of dabbled it in, in it in class, but I didn't really understand it. So I got to just kind of trial by fire, learn about it, and it happened to be a BuddyPress project, which is how the Buddy Camp thing started, but that in a second. So basically, um, I start posting on Facebook and Twitter, oh, I have this WordPress project. And suddenly, everybody said, can you help me with my WordPress website? <laughs> and suddenly, I had all the WordPress work I could ever want. And for most of that time, I was a WordPress freelancer. And thanks to, and I was actually going to tell this story, um, thanks to doing that BuddyPress contract, that practicum advisor kept me on. And then I helped him with a lot of BuddyPress uh, sites. And then when he started thinking about creating the first Buddy Camp, he asked if I'd help organize it. And that's, I think, the first time that JJ and Jay and I met, as we said. I think so, too. Yeah. I think so, too. Funny. Well, how cool is that? How, how often do we have origin stories that involve Buddy Press? <laughs> not, not often. Not often enough. But yes. Or origin uh, stories that involve the hosts. Ah, that's right. That's true, too. Yeah. That's that cool. Is, that as well. So tell us yeah. a little bit about. Uh, how you, a great, great uh, title, by the way, for your Hero Press essay, but tell us a little bit about the journey and how you've become the accidental activist. <laughs> Thank you. It, it literally <laughs> did feel like an accident. Um, and actually, I love that we do my origin story first because it, it, it went from there. So I was helping to organize Buddy Press. I was asked after that, people saw what a great job I did and asked if I would help 
organize WordCamp Vancouver in 2013. And that's when I learned that speaker diversity is a problem. We only had mm -hmm. about, so we had 52 speaker applications and only seven of them were from underrepresented people, specifically women, but also underrepresented in general. And so mm -hmm. in the end, we only had 14% diverse speakers at our event and people noticed and people complained they people wrote blog posts about it people talked to us privately about it well, which still what still happens today at word camps oh, where yeah. if oh, it's absolutely. noticed that you have panel sessions that are made up of panels and everyone on the panel is a white male and the person moderating the panel is a white male uh people take notice and you see people tweeting about this it's it's still a thing it's still a problem yeah. absolutely and side note on panels uh, in 2018, Vancouver had the highest percentage of women speakers. It was 63%, but a bunch of them were on a panel and the organizers to me, I don't know if they count, they're on a panel. I'm like, are you kidding me? Having a panel <laughs> of only the white guys would be terrible. Of course yeah. it counts. <laughs> Not right. that it's terrible, exactly. but I'll talk later, I'm sure, about you know why diverse voices are important, but sticking on the current story. Um, so discovered it was a problem and I, uh, some friends of some feminist friends of mine i was telling them that this was a problem and kind of said out loud um the thing that was coming up so there's a lot of reasons why people don't want to apply to speak and the one thing that kept coming up over and over when i started asking more people more intentionally was i wouldn't know what to talk about i'm not an expert in anything who would want to hear from me anyway and so some feminist friends of mine heard this and said why don't you just get them together in a room and brainstorm ideas. And that was mm -hmm. the seed that planted the idea that is now a four hour workshop. The one of the exercises in the workshop is the brainstorming where we give prompts and help people see that they have hundreds of ideas, maybe not hundreds, but you know, usually they come out with between mm -hmm. 10 and 50. So to any number is more than they came in with usually, which is fantastic. Um, and also a little shout out to Morton and this, I wanted to mm -hmm. give a little example of people are always asking me, I'm a white guy. I'd like to be an ally. How can I help? Great story about Morton. Um, I went to our uh, WordPress meetup and said, Hey, I have this idea. Let's hold a brainstorming session. And he said, no, you hold a brainstorming session. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, I'm busy. I can't do that. I don't know how. All, a lot of the same reasons that people gave us about not speaking. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he said, you are doing it. Um, and I explained, I'm a visionary, not a detail person. So we got some other women together to create the details of this workshop. And then in the end, uh, several cities started adding to it. And then Andrea mm -hmm. Middleton, and at the time, Jen Milo, back in 2013, when she was still part of WordPress, got it got wind of what we were doing and said we want you to take the best from all the cities and write a script that anyone anywhere can write can do and make sure it's not just women it's all diversity and that is how the workshop was born which we're still adding to and, and polishing all the time but that's the birth story of the workshop itself and then should i just continue on and talk about how i started the group or well, I, mean, I mean you mentioned jen milo and yeah. uh, and that's one of the small legacy she leaves on the wordpress project to this day her impact is her dedication to try and get more diverse people within leadership and within mm -hmm. the wordpress project and at WordCamps in general her and andrew middleton and on the on the topic of morton uh it totally makes sense that he would do something like that if you take a look at what he did at the uh, previous WordCamp us where he shared mm -hmm. the stage the limelight with underrepresented people who may not have had an opportunity to have their voice on that kind of a stage absolutely he's always been such a great um model for diversity and his other one of his other big loves accessibility they go hand in hand but they are kind of they they're together but separate for topics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, um, just like myself and a lot of people, uh, people like him and us really want the web to be used by all. We want opportunities for all. We want to see dynamic, diverse uh, communities. We want to see, you know, the people who create it and the people who speak about it are the same people who are using it. And WordPress is so user friendly that uh, a lot, the, the the kinds of people who are using it is very, varied out there and we can get even more mm -hmm. by focusing more on diversity 
So this script that you're talking about essentially becomes a curriculum that you can use to train other people. Mm -hmm. And now we get, now we can actually use this to uh, spread the wealth. Yeah. You know, to get absolutely. more trainers and get more people involved. How, how has this worked out so far over, over the past two years? Uh, so we've had, we've, We've been using this script since 2014, and I've been leading the team to promote and train it since end of 2017. So I'm able to talk about it over, what is it, four or five years now? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I feel like a lot of my life has been in this project. Um, it has gone really well. So the in the first few years, the groups who grabbed it and started running it typically went from, well actually, in all that time, from the first ones to the current version that it's in now, Groups typically go from about 10% or less diverse speakers to usually about 50% or even more, which is amazing. Can you imagine mm -hmm. that one, one workshop and some best practices can create such big change and help change communities? And, and, and I think part of that is when you do the workshop, you by going through these things and by talking to people, uh, it instills confidence. They, mm -hmm. they start realizing they can actually do this, that they don't have to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, it, it's nice to see the the end results is that uh, they get involved with, with, with speaking, which translates into uh, being able to, or, or recognizing the fact that, hey, if I can do this and be on this stage, maybe I can participate in other parts of the project. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of want to say a little bit more about the workshop content, the, the conference okay. piece, and more about what happens sure. when they, start speaking, which is my real passion. It's the what happens next. Um, mm -hmm. But the workshop content, so we go through imposter syndrome. You know, it's that's a f phenomenon that happens for most people where they feel like they're not good enough to be doing something and soon everybody else will find out. The difference is whoever is the majority of a population, so in North America, the, the white men won't let it stop them. They'll say, oh, I know a little bit about something. I'll go ahead and do this thing. Whereas diverse people will say, oh, I only know a little bit. I'm not going to do this thing. So I'm not saying it's only for diverse people. It's, it's an issue for everybody. Um, so we, we talk about, diver about imposter syndrome. We talk about what are the myths of the person standing up in front of the stage. It's not necessarily the expert who knows everything, especially in WordPress, where it's such a community-driven thing. So it's just everybody sharing the bit of knowledge that they have. Different people have different perspectives on a topic that somebody may have heard already before. They can also bring in new ideas that people haven't heard before. And then after that, we go through the actual, come up with a topic, come up with a title. And then after we first started the workshop, we discovered people wanted more. So we added on more. We added on create, write a pitch, because people might have a great talk but not get accepted. So mm -hmm. writing a great pitch, writing an outline, tips for becoming a better speaker, creating better slides. And so they walk out of it with a pitch, an outline, a title. They've practiced some, most of them have practiced speaking in front of the group and they feel like, yeah, I actually can do this. So it, it it's a very hands-on way of building the confidence that you mentioned. And in, in relation to what happens next? I know that I was watching a video earlier today where you, where you speak about a, an individual, an example where she went through this training and she she presented, I think it was at WordCamp Vancouver and mm -hmm. some an agency had saw her in the audience. What happened next? So, yeah. So it was the first time that she spoke. She hadn't spoken in tech before. She took her workshop, spoke for the first time on our stage at WordCamp Vancouver. The agency spotted her, hunted her down. They, based on her talk, they really wanted to have her uh, be one of their developers. And she became their first female developer and then quickly became their senior developer and team lead. And three years later, she is still the senior developer and team lead. See, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's what's got to give you some of the fire to, to continue doing this and, and to take it to the next level. Yeah, when I first started doing it, I was like, okay, there's a problem that everybody wants fixed. And it's something that I have stumbled on a solution that's working. But what really got me going is when I noticed the people taking a workshop and starting to speak, they started doing more in the community, they started taking on mm -hmm. organizing and leadership. There's some people in Vancouver who created a whole new meetup stream. Uh, one of the years of Vancouver was all women um, word camp organizers and half of them were people who had taken a workshop and had started speaking. And I've just seen 
just all these amazing, it started there. And then as I've embraced it more, I've just seen more and more leadership careers, people, you know, becoming more, doing more contributing, becoming more contributors, um, other people getting inspired by their ideas and running off and doing new things with it. It's really, it, that's, that's the thing I'm really most excited about. I want to start with tech and then eventually spread this out to beyond tech and see what kind of world changes we can have if more kinds of people are organizing and leading. No, so the, minor the, goals, no big deal. <laughs> so, so this effort is so important and you've made such inroads to this that Matt Mullerweg has commented on it. In fact, he shared a link to the project on the blog and Automatic recently announced that they're uh, funding a uh, 50% sponsorship for you to continue on this endeavor. Tell us a little bit about that and what the sponsorship funds, what that will go towards. Yeah, so uh, I am so grateful and so excited. And just at the mention of, again, I just have this huge smile again because I'm <laughs> so happy that this has come about. Um, so uh, it was a bit of a, a journey to get sponsorship. And um, I had many conversations with Automatic and in the end, uh, Matt suggested that they sponsor me, and that happened. Um, and so it's a 50% sponsor sponsorship. Um, I, uh, In order to have the bandwidth to be able to work on this project, I now have the money for half the time. And so um, as I'm sure a lot of people who contribute to the project know, it's a lot of work. Um, managing a team is, I've, I haven't managed a big team before. It's a big team. We have about 40 people come in and out constantly. Uh, and so um, it's a full-time job. So mm -hmm. I've now I, I've I've now been doing the pitching to get sponsorship for this full-time job and the kinds of things. Now that I've got the fifty percent sponsorship, and hopefully some other companies will see what great work there is and step in for the other twenty-five or fifty percent. The kinds of things that we're doing with this is uh, we're improving and uh, we're improving what we had before, and we're scaling up. So by improving, I mean. I took the approach that WordPress takes of don't don't have it perfect, just do iterate, do iterate. So now we've got mm -hmm. stuff that works, but is pretty clunky. Um, not everybody shows up. We, we have training sessions for people to learn how to run the workshop. Half or less show up to those sessions. So improving the processes so more people show up. And also mm -hmm. uh, last year, as far as I know, there was 12 meetups in six countries who ran the workshop, which is fantastic. But also we trained 45 cities and so um, improving the processes so that more people actually follow through and run the workshop mm -hmm. as well. And in addition to that, also getting the word out because the thing that happened at the end of 2017 is I spoke at WordCamp Seattle about this work before this project was born. And right afterwards, Andrew said, we need to talk this project it works, it's proven, we know it works, but not many people know it exists. And so by the end of that conversation with her, I was the lead of this team. And mm -hmm. uh, the goal was get more people, more Jills out there doing the work, which is now happening, and get, <laughs> get more, uh, more meetups around the world to know that exists. We have over 800 meetups, that number is growing. When I started this work in end of 2017, it was 600 plus, now it's 800 plus. I don't even know if it's more than that by now. Um, and a lot of groups are having the same problem and they just don't know that it's an issue. You know, They also mm -hmm. get called out or just see that their, their speaker, it's not that they wouldn't accept this more diverse speakers, it's that they're not applying in the first place. So getting mm -hmm. the word out to them that this exists, come find us, come run our workshop, take with or without the training and let us know that you run it and tell us your great stories afterwards of mm -hmm. what happened. Right. <laughs> and what I like about this, if you, if you look at how it works, it, there are many avenues to get started or involved in WordPress, but one of them that is accessible to a lot of people throughout the world are the meetups. And the meetups are the places where you know, for a lot of people, you finally get to go to a place where you're surrounded by your people, where, hey, these people also use WordPress. They know about WordPress. I can come here and I can talk about it. And then the, you do the training there for speaking. And once you build the confidence level up there for underrepresented groups or, or, uh, or for women, then that could translate into applying for their local WordCamps in those areas. And then they become a speaker. 
And then that could translate into, you know, they become role models or underrepresented people see themselves on stage. And it's really like a grassroots effort to get these under, to get underrepresented people and more women involved in not only just speaking, but leadership roles and, and just a more diverse project in general. You just summarized everything <laughs> perfectly. Can I just carry you in a box with me and just be like, yep, say the thing you just said. <laughs> but um, I think I think that's excellent that's exactly what the project it. needs. It, it, not just the project. I have sort of over the year, you know, I probably, if it were not for WordPress and covering WordPress and WordCamps and the tech space, I probably wouldn't know as much about the issue of diversity and genders and tech and pay gaps and women and the disrespect and the everything that goes on nowadays and and so uh, you know it's it, it's great that something like this is happening and i for one welcome a more diverse wordpress leadership team a more more mm -hmm. uh, team reps who are diverse and to get different opinions and perspectives i mean that's that's what we need and you know it prevents the project from getting stale and you know there are great things that happen when all these different uh, perspectives come together, you can really create some great ideas for paths on moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Diversity is such a huge topic. And um, it's it, people say, let's fix diversity, but it's a really large, nebulous thing that has many facets mm -hmm. to it. And so one of the things that really, I think, captured Automatic's attention and Matt's attention on this project, it is it is one specific thing that has an actual hands-on actionable mm -hmm. um, solution that produces mm -hmm. results. Um, and, right. it, and I also see it as it's one of the doorways in to working on the rest. Once mm -hmm. more people are stepping up to speak and, and be role models and like you said, you know, um, inspire other people as well as they themselves may step up and start doing more as well. All, all I can go on and on, all the different things that happen when people start getting up on stage, all the things that happen, that that is um, one seed that has this amazing ripple effect to the diversity of a community. Mm -hmm. and like it is said, like one of, like, oh, no, go, go ahead, ahead. go ahead. No, well, I was, go ahead. I, was, I was reading through this in diversity and I, I I have what may be a dumb question in terms of improving diversity, mm. maybe at, at these conferences. But if, uh, like, a, a, as a white male, would I be part of the solution if I just didn't apply to speak at these tech conferences in the hopes that somebody else mm. who may be underrepresented could fill in for me? That is a really interesting question. So, not applying to speak to encourage. Uh, spots for other people. Hmm. So I've never been asked that before. Congratulations, I, 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 <laughs> first mm, of all. Just something I thought of today, and I thought yeah. maybe it's a stupid question. But. Well, and so that's that's one of the things I mentioned at WordCamp Miami with Josefa was like, uh, there it, it it doesn't matter what your experience level is working on WordPress, or if you're new, or if you're an old timer like me, but. Like eventually, you, it, I think you have to step away. You have to step aside and make room for other people. I mean, that's my my own personal belief. I'm not trying to like, uh, you know, push that on anybody else. But uh, that that's one of the reasons why I I stopped applying to speak at work camps is because there there oh. is it 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 needs to, there are there are 15 years worth of new WordPress developers that have stuff that they can share that have experiences that are newer that are different than mine that. Just because, like you know, I can apply and people want to hear what I have to say, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the right thing for me to do is apply and give a talk for someone that could be local, that could have uh, some. That there, it's a missed opportunity for somebody else. And so, in mm. my opinion, uh, it does make sense for people that um, either are overrepresented or are just uh, over. I don't know over. Uh, exposed like, to the community to step aside and make room for other people. I, th I think it makes total sense. So, but, so what you're saying is this password camp EU is the last time we're going to see you on a stage <laughs> at a WordPress event. That's what you're saying. Well, so I had <laughs> joked uh, a little bit with, I mean, with some Sand Hills folks that like, you know, it, it, it could, this could easily be me retiring like Jordan, right? Like, <laughs> like me, me giving this talk uh, in, I mean, there were only three tracks at WordCamp Europe. So there, 
they, there was a thousand people that were forced to listen to me, one. So that was pretty fun. Uh, but I, I went back to an old school type of WordPress talk. It was show and tell. It was not a very uh, theoretical sort of pie in the sky type uh, philosophical talk about the community and the direction or this or that. This was just, we built some cool things and we want to show you what it was. Mm. Like those are the kind of talks that I think uh, the, the, the type of training that you and your group provide mm. uh, is really, uh, if you're not used to doing it or you're not comfortable doing it, is very it's, it's emotional it's difficult to make people feel comfortable and get them into a place where like they can sit in front of a dozen people or a thousand people and just do show and tell right, right. like just to get people comfortable with sharing a little bit of what they do or themselves or their experiences uh it, it's easy for uh, boys because i feel like boys do show and tell with transformers when they're four mm. years old uh, there's, but it, it's just, it's not as easy for other people. So yeah. like there I is like a time it. for me to shut up and for, <laughs> to let other people, uh, start talking about the cool stuff that they're working on and doing. I, those are some really great perspectives and, um, it's making me think of things. Uh, for one thing, for some people, they do have a lot of things to work through in order to get up on stage. Um, you know, the, um, diverse folks have not always the greatest life experiences, um, mm. not, not to say that everybody doesn't, but they can be pretty intense um, mm. and on a whole different level that us white mm -hmm. folks don't even, can't even fathom. Uh, and mm. so being able to put themselves out there and getting up on stage can be a really big deal for a lot of people. Um, mm. And I do want to add on, so for the, the question about, um, you know, does it help by stepping back? I'm going to say that I say, I see pros and cons to both, so I'm gonna officially not take a stance on that. But I will say <laughs> that I've seen some people do something that I think is really great, which is say, if there isn't at least one other woman or diverse person or something, if, there isn't, if I'm not sharing the stage with at least one other kind of person, uh, then I'm not participating in this conference. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really powerful stance to take. And yeah, either yeah. way, doing not just stepping back either way, whatever your stance is on that, but actually doing the work to build more up because you can't just step back and have a void. You need to actually do the work like the workshop and uh, mm -hmm. help people mm -hmm. feel more comfortable wanting to even apply to speak in the first place. And then sort of the second kind of part of this equation, uh, at least in the WordPress world with the work camps are the organizers to people putting these things together to people who are on the speaker selection committees or panels where they have to, it'd be nice if they have this uh, of the thought process of, uh, of, of diversity, trying to create a diverse mm. group of speakers and, and not necessarily a group of people who have this thought process of, well, six, seven, eight women applied uh, they're automatically, it doesn't matter what we think of their talk, they're automatically going to be presenting at this WordCamp because we have to change these numbers around. Th that's the wrong approach to take. That essentially turns people into a statistic. Mm. There's, again, it, it's uh, a bit tricky. I know in our case, the first year that we did it, we had seven apply and we accepted six. Um, and... <sighs> I, again, I see both sides. There's the, you don't want, you just don't want just, you don't want just statistics, but you also want diverse voices. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, you don't want to accept people just because they're the unicorn right. who's a different kind of person. But on the other hand, you do want those people speaking as well. So what we did in WordCamp Vancouver, the three years that I was on the speaker selection committee is, um, you know, we do a first pass to see what are all the talks that are even possible that we'd want in. And then we'd look at um, a, a, a split between local and non-local, especially in Vancouver. We don't really have too many cities around us. So we'd have a little bit more balance of the non-local folks, even though they really encourage more local, which is another reason why they really love this workshop because it brings up more local voices. But mm -hmm. we'd look at local, non-local, men, women, uh, developer, non-developer, and so, and between all that, it worked out that the the years that we started focusing on it, the next two years I was part of it, we had fifty percent speakers both those years, uh, fifty percent women speakers. It really really helped that the next year 
we had so many women apply that we actually had three times the number of women that we had speaker slots. So once that happens, it becomes easy. You're not just picking mm -hmm. by numbers, you're picking by what is great. And so doing the work to get people speaking at the meetups, so then they want to apply to speak at the word camps, will give you more numbers to um, so that you're not just picking just so that you've got them there to have the numbers, but will give you the kind of programming that you want as well. And, and somebody who's done a great job with this and the, and the organizer team is David Bista and the organizers of WordCamp mm -hmm. Miami, which is a huge camp. Uh, turned out to be, it's turned out to be a huge event every year uh, in the U S and they've made a specific point to focus on diversity and to have a diverse mm -hmm. set of speakers. And within this past WordCamp, I think they were almost at 50% speakers, mm -hmm. Uh, fifty percent uh, women for speakers, so they're they're making uh, huge progress, at least down there for a huge WordPress event. That is fantastic. And sh shout out to the highest numbers that I'm aware of. Seattle in 2017 had sixty percent, and Vancouver in 2018 had sixty three percent. So, kind of great. <laughs> and that was specifically mm -hmm. people who identify as women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So how okay. can people, if people love hearing what you're doing and they want to get involved, how can they participate in this project? How can they help you and others? Yeah, great question. So if you're a meetup, I'll, I'll, I'll say for the different kinds of people, if you're a meetup, we have a form to fill out at tiny.cc slash WP diversity to let us know that you want to run the training and also request help if you want help, um, the training from us to run the workshop. Uh, people who want to become volunteers for this amazing, fun project, which is the uh, WordPress Diverse Speaker Training Group. Um, basically, find me on Slack, Jill Binder, or find any of my posts on the community website, which is make.wordpress. I always forget if it's .org or .com. Org. Slash, or, .org, thank you, slash community. And I have tons of posts on there. Comment on any mm -hmm. of those. Um, and then if you're a company and you would really like to make sure that this work keeps happening, because right now I've only got 50% of my time covered and that is not the amount that this project needs. And so mm -hmm. to see it keep running, uh, you can contact me on my website, diversein.tech or Slack or Twitter. I'm Jill Binder on all the places. And also if you're not WordPress and you're like, oh, this sounds amazing. I wish I could have this for my community. Now you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I'm expanding this work to other texts and I'm really happy awesome. to say that in two weeks, Magento is having their first workshop and in September, Drupal is having their first workshop. There we go. And okay. I'm right now lining up uh, workshops for next year. So contact me if you'd like to open up the diversity of your conferences or even people speaking up in or on behalf of your company. Well, Joe, I just want to say awesome. thanks a lot for the work that you're doing and for mm -hmm. finding a means and a way that appears to be working based on the numbers of getting more diverse people, not only speaking, but involved in other aspects of WordPress. Thank you and your team and the volunteers out there as well for contributing mm -hmm. to this project. And I wouldn't mind having you on again. If you'd like, I invite you on, uh, you know, within six months, maybe we won't Around or just after WordCamp US to where we could talk about what's new with the project and I can help spread the word for you. I want to hear about the uh, progress for uh, Magento and Drupal. Ooh. I want to hear <laughs> about how those go. And and I, yeah. uh, I, I agree with Jeff. I want to second everything you said. Uh, it is an enormous amount of effort and a lot of work. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult work. Uh, I mean, it's rewarding and it's fun and you're building something really from the ground up. But uh, I have a lot of experience and can appreciate how it feels to to do the work, not knowing whether or not you're being sponsored or getting paid or how that's going to work or how in debt you're going to go trying to, to see this through. And uh, so I can appreciate that. And not to make this uh, too meta, but, uh, you know, sometimes we don't have a lot of... Uh, uh, diversity on the podcast. You know, we struggle a little bit as just two dudes on a show, and we we joke about it occasionally. But it is a two serious white topic that like show. that <laughs> that like uh, it, we do really appreciate having a diverse guests and, and group of people to talk about everything that it is that's going on. And so uh, I, I appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate all the work that you've put in, all the time that's gone into it. It's a lot, and uh, 
uh, I appreciate it. It's great. It's awesome. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you for playing your part in helping to spread the word about this. And also, yes, thank you. To, there's so many people who have put work into the workshop and the volunteers doing the project. And so thank you to everybody who has contributed to this. All right, Joe, I hope to see you in a few months with uh, reports, some updates on what's going on. Uh, until then, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. All right, you there Joe you have it, folks. That was uh, Joe Bondier, the uh, trainer, the chief consultant and trainer at Diverse Speakers in Tech and leading the uh, Diverse Speaker Training Group, something that's really cool uh, within the WordPress community. It's, uh, uh, you know how there are people, there are so many people in the WordPress community, and then you start focusing and put your head down and working on your own area of the thing that you think you can make an impact in. And it's like, I don't really overlap with Jill ever. So it's like really awesome to have her on the show because it's, uh, you've known each other for a long time and uh, it's cool. I don't know. It's a special episode, I guess. It's fun. So I do want to cover a couple of news topics. And then I think at the end, we'll, I'll let you. Uh, tell us a little oh, bit boy. about your review of WordCamp EU because you were there. You're on the yeah, ground. Yeah. So I want to hear about oh, what yeah. happened. So one of the tidbits of news is that Pantheon has announced uh, early access for their local dev environment. It's called Pantheon Local Dev, uh, which just so happens to be the third local dev environment tied to a host that's mm -hmm. been released in recent weeks. Uh, the current mm -hmm. version is 0.4.2, so it's still in early access state, but it's been through extensive internal testing and is being put through its paces by members of their heroes community, which I believe is probably a beta testing group for things that they're working on. Now, uh, Pantheon says that the mission for local dev is to democratize access to Pantheon's web ops workflow, which by the way, everybody seems to be democratizing something these days. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's noticed, I've noticed. And they also say that while it's built on top of a modern stack, which includes both Docker and Lando, it presents a polished and easy to use GUI interface for getting sites from Pantheon into a workable local state. However, they say that power developers who are comfortable with the CLI or command line interface are likely to have more fun just working with Lando directly. So they're working on that. Uh, so you have uh, uh, you have Pantheon local dev, you've got local by flywheel, you've got WP engine dev kit, you know, and kind of unfortunately for Pantheon, when they released this, uh, the news was kind of like poo poo. Oh no, this is a thing. It's all recent within other hosts that have local dev environments. And we've talked about this before where I mm -hmm. kind of jokingly said, Hey, you know, if you've got clients on all these different sites, you're going to have to install these do uh, local dev environments where you can, you know, makes it more, makes it easier to, you know, uh, push and pull projects mm -hmm. to these hosts, which led to a conversation by Morton Rand Hendrickson saying that this having all these different local environments that are tied to a host, which uh, some describe as vendor lock in, we need some sort of open tool, or maybe something built in core for a local dev environment. I was taking a look at Lando, and Lando seems to fill the needs of being that open mm -hmm. source kind of local dev tool, which Pantheon Local Dev is built on. Mm hmm. Lando seems to be the thing that's like, I haven't I haven't tried it yet. I've been meaning to, but I haven't had the time. I have coworkers that have been using Lando for a, a little bit now that swear by it. One of the things that I look forward to specifically with Lando, in theory, is like better battery life because you're not running all of this uh, extra additional environmental things in a virtual machine. You're not running a separate environment. You're just you're letting Lando take care of it. So uh, Pantheon's approach seems to be kind of the one to to take. And it also sounds like uh, the beta version of local from the folks at Flywheel. I don't know if it's using Lando, but it sounds like they have fixed some of the battery life virtualization issues. And so, uh, I mean, there were lots of threads. There was Morton's thread. Uh, there was Chris Lemmis thread that I chimed in on a little bit. Uh, yeah, we've talked about it yeah, on the and show. He, he I don't confirmed know Liquid Web is not go, working on the local dev environment yeah, tool for Liquid Web. Right. And it's like, this is one of those things. Like, uh, it is really good and healthy that there are many people trying to solve this problem. Like, that is a good thing. It might not seem like it, and there's going to be weird times for a while for a lot of people, but it is important. Again, we just got done talking to Jill. Like, diversity is important. And so, like, in order for 
uh, us to come up with that uh, panacea of local WordPress development. Uh, we need to have a bunch of different options available to us to kind of figure out what it is that we want to take the best pieces of and make something great. Uh, but it, it's like local it's dev gonna, environment, natural selection. Kind of, right? I mean, we need to be able to see it. You, like MAMP has been, I mean, MAMP for a really long time. Uh, Andy Nason used MAMP. I used MAMP for years. There are a lot of people that use MAMP. MAMP Pro is Mamp, worth Wamp, the money, exam. frankly. Like, yep, there, it's, uh, th those are all, they're, they're tested. And if you visit the websites of all these that, local dev environments, they all say at the top, number one local dev environment. <laughs> I know, I know. And like, and I get it, right? Like it's, uh, the, everyone want it is, if you use Pantheon, like their tool will be familiar. You will feel comfortable using Pantheon's tool. Like I downloaded it. I activated it. I didn't actually get to use it for anything again, but, uh, but it, You'll it, you'll feel right at home. Flywheels app is wonderful. Is like uh, the the they really did uh, kind of nail the UI on this one. Uh, desktop server there are like a bunch that uh, server press right. Like there's a bunch that have been around for a long time. But I feel like local from the folks at Flywheel was the first one that like made it really easy and felt more modern and like really made it like I don't know like a good like it like it made a lot of sense and so. Uh, at, at least with Pantheon, their their dev kit being built on top of or using Lando makes it seem like vendor locking isn't a thing. Because if you just want to use Lando, you could just use Lando. But if you have clients mm -hmm. on Pantheon or you want extra features that make it easy to push and pull to Pantheon, well, then you could use mm -hmm. their dev kit. But the the one thing on my soapbox, like that I that I tweeted in Chris Lemus thing in in his thread, uh, not to like take over his idea or anything, but like. The, the thing that bugs me the most about it is that uh, it's going to take a couple of years for everyone uh, to figure this out. And th those few years, while everyone is working on their own solution to this problem, uh, are, is, are generally going to be like everyone solving their own problems instead of trying to bubble those fixes and solving those problems up into WordPress core the way that generally has worked for WordPress up until now. And so... Which is what uh, most of the dev it, kits already are anyways, is people solving their own problems that they've had with other dev kits. Right, exactly. And so like the, 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 the problem is that there's a lot of effort and time and money that's going to go into every single one of these companies investing in a team of people to build these local environments. And that's great. But there is a little bit of like, uh, I don't know if it's a responsibility or an expectation. I don't know what the word is, but like, the the I hope that the responsible thing to do is to uh, take the things that you learn from those and make sure that WordPress core is improved as a result of the effort that goes into each one of these environments. Because frankly, like that is the key feature of WordPress. The key feature is not a block based editor. It is not whatever the fancy thing of the day or the year is. Like the best feature in WordPress is that it is relatively platform agnostic or like environment agnostic. Like WordPress works because it is allowed to work with a pretty vast array of PHP versions or server configurations or environment configurations or pieces of software turned on or not turned on, PHP modules turned on or off, like rewrite rules or whatever else. Like WordPress exists and is what it is as a platform because of the multiple types of server environments that it's able to run in. And so like if all of these hosts build their own local environments for their own walled gardens without sharing what the things are that they're using that are turned on or off, then WordPress doesn't remain the flexible piece of software that it is today. It's going to stay rigid for all of these little individual nuances that every host has to try and uh, you know, uh, be better than everyone else. Like competition's healthy and it's great and all those things. I get that. But, uh, you know, my thought is like... So so with all those things you said about platform agnostic and all the benefits of WordPress, having a dev environment or dev kit built into core, somehow core taking care of this issue seems like it'd be counterproductive to what you just said. Kind of. Because like then, the, the then it seems like it would be tying itself to a specific platform and to a specific configuration. Right. Right. And so like the, a, 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 
a quality WordPress developer will be able to use the APIs that come with WordPress to write plugins or themes or API endpoints or front ends or code or whatever you need to do uh, that does is the, the environment does not matter. It literally does not matter. Like deploying it from your local machine to your uh, to your web host might be uh, you know that's the problem that everyone is kind of concentrating on solving right now, and that's great. But the code that you write should not matter what the local environment is running in. Like the only reason to have a different local environment should be because you like the UI or you like the tools that it provides you. And right now the tools, everyone's doing something different and everybody includes something different and everybody has their own caching that's in there. And some of that caching works for some things and not for others. And some of it works for sessions and sessions break other things. And like this whole, like everyone kind of scrambling to solve these problems is making life much more difficult for developers because there are several different kinds of very specific environments that people have to code for instead of there being the same one relatively ubiquitous set of WordPress core APIs that developers can count on using. Uh, and so it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's important that, that we have diversity in people solving these problems, but it, the goal shouldn't be to have like all of these different local environments that compare and contrast and conflict with one another. The goal should be to write WordPress related code that runs anywhere um, because it is possible to do using the WordPress core APIs and even rolling your own safely. Like, so that that's the whole thing. So, so my, my rant to Chris <laughs> and my, my closing rant to this and my idea that maybe it isn't going to gain a whole lot of traction on Twitter or maybe not even to our listeners, but like it is not uncommon for businesses that are similar to one another to form some kind of consortium, like the World Wide Web Consortium. Like there are uh, other examples, better examples than that, uh, of companies that are competitors, but that uh, that do use the same foundation and core, like WebKit or something, where uh, they they all agree to kind of work together on uh, the things that they should or feel comfortable working on together with a board of directors or with bylaws or with expectations on how uh, to behave within this consortium uh, and uh, to, to kind of build, to solve the same problems, uh, but just allowing everyone to kind of wrap their design or their aesthetic or their approach uh, into their own uh, version of a web browser, their own version of a local development tool or whatever else. Like it might be premature, and it might not happen because I know that people are afraid of like, you know, their secret sauce leaking and not having a leg up on each other and whatever else. But uh, that's what consortiums are for is to like create those boundaries to like have a safe environment for people that are trying to solve the exact same problems to do it together in a safe way in a place. So like, again, my soapbox rant on this is, uh, is over and done, but like, that's how I feel about it. From John's rant to WooCommerce, WooCommerce, <laughs> 3.6.5 has been released. It's actually a security release. Uh, this it contains quite a few fixes to harden security. Uh, the WooCommerce team says they encourage people to update your stores as soon as possible. There's over 70 commits in this release. Uh, you could check them out in detail on the WooCommerce.com blog. So as far as I know, it's just a hardened security. There's no active security exploits or anything in the wild. It's just, uh, hey, we've improved security, so update as soon as possible so your site mm -hmm. is safer as a result. The only two security things they mentioned are uh, like a very specific file type check on a tax rate importer and the uh, announce check on the CSV importer. So these were just like two very small importer-related uh, security hardening things that would be very difficult for anybody uh, to exploit. They would probably already have to have some other level of access to exploit something. So everything else here is fixes and enhancements. And the Jetpack team has released another major version, 7.5. Uh, and this one debuts a new feature called Magic Links. So now you can log into the WordPress mobile app and one click without using passwords or a password manager or trying to use that keyboard on, uh, mm -hmm. on an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, if you visit the main Jetpack dashboard in your site's admin area, you can email yourself a magic link by clicking the login to the WordPress mobile app, which is to show an example of there. 
uh, the link will show up in your inbox and it should be as simple as that to log in to the site. Uh, they've also paid attention to uh, the UI, the microcopy, the headings uh, throughout the plugin. They've gone through and they've kind of cleared things up, clarified uh, some of the wording and the text throughout uh, the plugin. And I imagine that was some work because <laughs> there's a lot of headings and text and stuff, you know, and Jetpack. Yep. So they've made a lot of work on there. You can download uh, Jetpack 7.5. In fact, they just recently uh, pushed out 7.5.1, which doesn't have any functionality changes, but it does fix a bug when attempting to delete the Jetpack plugin. It also addresses the new PHP minimum requirement in Jetpack 7.5. And it's interesting about this version uh, i updated late last night uh jetpack to 7.5.1 on the tavern and i ended up getting an email about a an error that was discovered on the tavern like uh hmm. from a site health check or something error from a plugin and it had something to do with jetpack so i don't know if it had something to do with this version or had an issue uh re-enabling the plugin but i got the email so i'm just gonna ignore it and we'll see what happens hmm. next time <laughs> when i update uh, the Jetpad plugin, which I also saw somebody in the comments reported the same thing. So who knows? I really like their update posts. Like sanding down the edges is one of those like metaphors that I use a lot when it comes to these kinds of things. Like WordPress needs to do this too. Like over time, a lot of the verbiage choices or the decisions, they just don't blend together. They don't come from the same voice. They don't make a lot of sense. They get kind of like Jill said earlier, they get uh, they get put in quickly, they don't get deeply scrutinized, or they get so scrutinized that somebody just makes a decision and gets sick of talking about it. And then eventually it just, uh, it feels a little snaggy, it feels a little sharp. And so going through every screen, every language, uh, string used, every button to make sure that uh, it all makes sense is like, is like not maybe the most rewarding work in the world for someone to do, but it is really, really important. Uh, that to uh, that everything feel cohesive. So it's good to see. And we'll end the news segment with a bit of a controversial slash discussion topic. Uh, it was a tweet by John O. Nolan, who is the founder and CEO of Ghost, an open source uh, publishing platform. And in his tweet, he says, quote, can never decide if I'm flattered or horrified that a $1.1 billion, 1,000 person company with 83% share of CMS market seriously employs a full-time team dedicated to attacking a 12 person bootstrap nonprofit org with an open source product. And he includes a screenshot of an email from wordpress.com's concierge service. Uh, I will read this email because it's important if we're going to discuss mm -hmm. this and the email starts off with greetings. My name is what been blacked out redacted redacted. And I work at automatic, the company behind wordpress.com and other WordPress related tools and services. My colleagues noticed that you may have been having some trouble on medium and decided to move freecodecamp.org to ghost. Now that's a big time site that was hosted on medium. Did mm -hmm. you consider moving the site to WordPress? I work on a special projects team that helps influential people and organizations launch WordPress sites. If you're interested, we could chat about what our team could help with. If you are interested in using WordPress uh, parentheses, usually hosting and migration help along with design updates if needed, end parentheses. We can also help with performance and security or whatever else you might have questions about. And he underlines in the next uh, section, to be clear, we don't change anything for our services. We just Sorry. want to, we don't charge anything for our services. We just want to empower people who are doing interesting things. If you're interested in hearing us out, just let me know and we can set up a call or keep the conversation going by email. Thanks. So with that email, I you know I initially thought, what's the problem here? It's just it's just uh, mm -hmm. it's the marketing team doing a, a marketing pitch. There's no attacks going on here. But as I've read the replies, and this has received a lot of replies, a lot of likes, a lot of retweets. Yes, it has. I yes, can it has. I can see now why there is a gray area, at the very least, a gray area, if not what some people consider. Uh, slimy tactics in terms of a company like Automatic going to a client for a competing open source publishing platform or host in Ghost and offering services for free in order to entice them to switch to their company. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's where I could see why so many people see why this is an issue. And I, you know, at first I thought, 
you know, no big deal. But a lot of people have weighed in on this, including Matt Mulloway himself. And Matt actually responded to these tweets where he says, quote, I often send these emails myself. So does Dries. You can see him admit to it in 2009, referencing an email sent in 2002. And he references a link to a keynote called the Skull Dudgery. Uh, Matt also goes on to say that we do have a full-time concierge team that helps prominent sites move to WordPress. No payment or anything expected. They also offer existing WordPress sites help. They're really good. In fact, if anyone with a prominent site would like an introduction, let me know. He also continues with, this is really just to get sites we admire like Free Code Camp on WordPress. There's no upsell later. Quincy Larson, who started Free Code Camp, shared his email address with my colleagues via Twitter direct message and said, I'd be excited to hear your thoughts. So they emailed him and somehow that email ended up on Twitter. And then he concludes by saying, we did this when we were tiny too. Everyone does it every size. That's why I pointed to the old DrupalCon video. I also try to convert my Uber drivers and people I meet on planes and friends of friends, end quote. So I'm, I'm happy to see at least Matt chime in on the conversation and be and be part of the conversation. But first, I want you to give your analogy to me about steaks because I have received some feedback about they like <laughs> they enjoyed your analogy oh, and no. what your thoughts are on this. Oh, no. I mean, it's like uh, it. my analogy is that it's a little bit like you, uh, you Jeff, take take your wife out for like a prepaid, wonderful steak dinner, which I know you appreciate and enjoy very much. Which is going to happen uh, Friday. And you, and you sit down at the table uh, and you, you eat your steak dinner and you're happy and your wife is happy and everybody is, is full. And then the neighboring restaurant, maybe the chef comes over and then says, hey, uh, we can offer you free and unlimited steak uh, next door. Uh, and you've already spent the money on your steak. You were already happy. Uh, and now someone comes into a place where you don't expect them to, to be, uh, which, I mean, Matt sort of clarified maybe part of my analogy as being sort of off the mark. But uh and then uh, sort of just kind of kind of sniping you or kind of like diminishing your experience at the restaurant that you just had uh, for the, the dinner you just ate. Like uh, Free Code Camp moved off of Medium onto Ghost. They were happy, seemingly happy. Uh, and then they sort of get the, out, of the, out of the blue or from out of nowhere after the job is already done, after, in theory, someone may have, let's assume, paid someone to move them off of Medium to Free Code Camp I'm, or to Ghost. It's, I'm assuming Free Code Camp didn't spend zero dollars to make that move. They had to have spent some money at some point. Uh, so to have someone come back after the fact and say, like, "Hey, we'll we'll help you out for free," uh, it just it 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 doesn't. It's not. It's not classy. It doesn't it doesn't seem right. It's. Uh, it's just, it, it's like, it's not what you expect and it's not where you expect it to happen. And, uh, uh, and I get is, that point. Is it similar but, to like a prominent web host going down and another managed WordPress web host saying, hey, look, they're down and we're up and we'll offer you a discount to come on over and switch if you want. Well, I mean, that happened recently, right? Uh, yes. But I it, mean, that it happened. So, it's, it's not classy. It, it 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 depends, right? Like uh, when that happened with the one of the one of the web hosts, uh, it sounded like the web host was like they were abolishing their service, right? Like they were just canceling customers on the fly. And so, it is one thing if you really are, you really are like offering a service or bailing somebody out, or you're you're there to support someone in a time of need. The difference is that free code camp seemingly was not in a time of need. Their, their needs were met. Uh, and so to come in and say, yeah, we're happy that your needs were met, but we're going to try and meet them a little bit better in a different way. And you don't have to pay us to do it. Uh, it is very generous, but it, it the, and, the, and to John's point, how off. can his 12 person company compete against that kind of offer? Right. Right. And like shout out to John O'Nolan, who, uh, again, have known for a long time. Great public speaker, uh, super awesome person. Uh, one of those people that I wish I like was cool enough to spend time with and hang out with more. But I know that I'm not. Uh, but like he was an old time WordPress contributor who got frustrated by the environment and the process and uh, and, and went out to very successfully create Ghost. Uh, really as a result of his 
poor experiences contributing to WordPress. And so like to have a small company that is very specifically set up as a nonprofit org uh, to to know that the 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 for profit corporation uh, that you know you've kind of uh, really disliked strongly enough to make your own CMS uh, is continuing to uh, follow you and attempting to. Uh, take some of the like higher profile sites uh, or replatform them uh, is, I mean, my analogy afterwards was, you know, this is like, this is like if every time you succeed and every time you, you take a step forward, you do something that you feel like is successful and healthy or is, is something that's worth celebrating that like the grim reaper is constantly knocking on your door. Like, hello, we're here. Just we're still here. Don't forget about me being over here knowing that they can kind of just squash you at any time with uh, bigger budgets, the offer of free labor, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, it just it, it, a, a thousand people versus 12 or however many people are on a special projects team. Like I am sort of kind of, uh, you know, embellishing a little bit, but uh, I can empathize with how that must feel. And uh, it doesn't, it doesn't sit, super awesome but i mean matt cleared up some things and i get where matt's enthusiasm and passion and all those things come from too right it's not like these are two unrelatable uh, perspectives here but and john brought uh, up in his other tweets a lot of stuff regarding automatic and some some mm -hmm, issues that mm -hmm. have gone on in the past and somebody had asked matt well what about all these other issues that have been brought up and matt said uh It'd be better to debunk these warm conspiracy theories, something to that effect within a blog post that he hopes with a lot of links that he hopes to uh, publish maybe by the end of this month or next. Uh, because John talks about how they stole a theme of his and, and mm -hmm. re, re took the GPL copyright out of it. And they talk about the Chris Pearson stuff and how automatic tried to steal the trademark. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff that was added on to this, but you know, from the email, I mean, I, I guess it all comes down to timing context and, you know, basically well, what they're, what they're offering at that time and the company, the company who's offering it. There's a little bit of like, you know, there's a little bit of history here also. And so like, uh, it's not just that, your standard marketing pitch. That's hard. That is that is hard to forget about or get rid of. And so, like for example, and this is I again totally speculating, but I, I'll just I'll throw it out there since we're talking about it. So one of the things that John uh, had tweeted is uh, is uh, price fixing for the dot blog registries. And so he has a screenshot of uh, you know a few. Uh, Blogger.blog is being priced at $250. Medium.blog uh, is $250. And then Ghost.blog is being $5,220. And so here's here's my hot take on this, right? Is like it, Ghost is just a word. And so it is a common word. It is a popular word. And so like I know for a while uh, they didn't have three-letter uh, domains for .blog. Uh, they just weren't available. You couldn't even register them. They just weren't around. Uh, and so, like, it's one thing if you just reached out and said, hey, can we get ghost.blog for not $5,000? We don't know that they didn't ask. We don't know if that conversation happened or didn't happen. But I kind of assume that, like, if John would have just reached out and said, hey, why is this so much? Can we not spend $5,000 on this? That, like, a, a different approach might yield different results. But if what you do, and like contrary to like, you know, and I'm not calling John out for this because I've gone on my own Twitter rants in the past, but like John sort of stored up a ton of energy here and then <laughs> kind of Hadouken a big fireball about like multiple things that, uh, you know, kind of ticked him off. And so like this is a lot. There's a lot here. And uh, that is one of those things that like, I don't know. You kind of gotta. It's hard to let it go, and it's hard yeah. to move on from it. But if you if, if you want to have a better working relationship with somebody, and you don't want to have them competing against you or working against you, the only way to do that is to like be open and communicate and have those conversations and like have an understanding and like a mutual 
sort of a beer summit. You sit down, have some beers and like hammer it out. Like if it's really impossible and you can't see eye to eye and you can't get along and you're never going to be friends, that is also perfectly fine. But at least now you know that. And like, if that's where this is, then I guess get over it. Like storing up all this energy and like firing stuff back and forth is like a lot of wasted effort when like it doesn't focus on any of the cool stuff that anybody's doing or working on. It's really just like it just doesn't sit well. Nobody nobody wins from so it's like Goku fighting Cell and the and the it planet is, Earth yeah. just gets destroyed. It's right. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. Yes. It's exactly what it is. Right? Reference. All right. There so you, let's, you let's finally move. worked one into the show. <laughs> let's let's move on to our last and final thing. Uh, tell us briefly, if you could, <laughs> what, your what your experience was like at Work Camp EU in Berlin. You and our listeners both know that anything is never brief. I but, uh, know. But, That's why I said briefly, I know. just so you at least heard so, the word. So I will tell you, Jeff, what I have told everyone else, which is Word Camp Europe this year was the best Word Camp I've ever been to. Like hands down, it was the best. Um, the tons of volunteers, all tons of great speakers. Uh, the venue was great. Uh, Berlin is is a beautiful, fun, thriving city. Uh, different uh, than you know what I'm used to living in the old Midwestern in the United States, but uh, very cool and uh, like it, I'm very impressed. Like I left just very impressed with uh the the enormous amount of effort that it takes to run an event of 3000 people plus three tracks uh every room every track was like super well attended which is great as a speaker frankly because like uh you don't feel like you have an empty room like every room was packed um tons of water and refreshments and snacks available um like all of the amenities like is it, it, it's something that like for WordCamp US would be really nice, but it is is a little bit difficult to do is like, what a lot of conferences do is like having the hotel be the venue is like an amazingly convenient thing. Oh yeah. Like you get to, you just run up to your room and drop your laptop off or drop your bag off or run up to the room or and take, take a, a nap, nap if you need to or whatever. <laughs> take a nap, take a shower, whatever you got to do. I am socially to like overloaded. I have to go to my yep. room. Yeah, you can do it in 30 seconds, right? Like, it's just so great to have those uh, two things be in the same place. Uh, the first, th like, the three days that WordCamp Europe was happening, I didn't leave the hotel. <laughs> it wasn't until... Did you get we, a chance like, to, to see and talk to Marcel? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Right. Uh, I, and and I, 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 like, intersected, I think, accidentally briefly uh, with Rarst, who I have never met in person, uh, but want to, wanted to, meant to, tried to, but wasn't able to make it happen. But like, uh, it was the first time I got to got to meet Stephen Edgar in person. A long time uh, BB Press contributor, long time Meta uh, that like, must have contributor. Been cool. Must have been a moment. But it was awesome. It was like uh, I got to meet Sergey, who I have not met in person. Uh, it was Sergey's birthday that week, uh, which it was just like there were so many people that. Uh, I have not met in person that I got to hang out with uh, that I don't think I would have gotten to hang out with in any other way in like everyone's sort of comfortable environment. Like we talked about earlier with Jill, like the, I mean, culturally Europe being just Europe, but also like WordPress being WordPress. Uh, it was just like a very low stress, very high rewarding environment and time to just hang out with everybody. Like, um, it my, my talk was well received which i mean selfishly like i'm always happy about but like uh everybody's talks were just like outstanding phenomenal like really high quality talks and um did you go to the after party uh, was there a strip tease <laughs> <laughs> so okay so i did go to the after party there was not a strip tease okay Jeff. sorry okay. to disappoint you i guess but no like, no you're not disappointing uh, okay me. Okay, okay. But there was a moment where uh, I think like the the performers on stage probably went like one click over what the 
community did, would probably consider it to be. What they did is they went one click over what was not expected because the word Correct. camp EU organizing That's team exactly. have already issued apologies and exactly. explanations for what happened. Exactly. They had they it, had people who watched the show as the way it was meant to be, and what they mm -hmm. ended up getting was something not what they expected. That's, right. That's exactly right. And so it is it is it is the performers that were great. I mean, they really they worked hard and they did a really good job. Uh, and given the theme of what word camp Europe's Man, after party was, which was, was, was eighties, which like there were tons of people that did an, they were uh, uh, great costumes. They, 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 you know, they traveled halfway across from wherever to bring their costume with them. And shout and out to Aaron Campbell. He had uh, Marty McFly, uh, the, the rainbow awesome. hat on awesome. Marty Jr. It was cool. Yep. Uh, it was just all around awesome. Like it's, uh, it, it it raised the bar for me quite a bit, um, and uh, it, I'm 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 yeah. happy and glad you, that you got to go and experience me too, uh, me too. that city. So uh, we had uh, a few other Sandhills uh, employees were there: uh, Michael Beal, uh, Kyle Maurer, Drew Janes. Um, we got to hang out with Michael, which is something we don't get to do uh, all that frequently, and so that was really fun. Um, and man, I mean, it was just so much. Um, so all in all, like, just, even, uh, just an awesome experience you remember for life. So, so here's my closing statement about it quickly, because I can see that you're getting antsy about it, and I'm you know, <laughs> we're already over the we're already I over know. the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, what Camp Europe? The uh, what they did really well. What my what my favorite part of it was was that the the like the vendor area or like the sponsor booth area like it felt more like a trade show it felt like like a bigger uh like a just bigger than wordcamp us bigger than most of the other wordcamps like everybody really went all out with having really great booths like it felt like south by southwest it felt like not a wordcamp um i mean google had a big thing last year wordcamp us with their site kit launch and or the launch even it was, it was the same booth um, but everybody's booths were like big and spacious and comfortable and fun and like tons of presence, lots of employees, lots of like people in the vendor area talking and sharing and like hanging out with other people. So um, I got to meet a bunch of people from Gravity Forms uh, that I hadn't met before. Some folks from Delicious Brains, like they're just people that like, you know, you have to travel halfway across the world to run into uh, that you don't ever see otherwise. So but the vendor booth area is cool. Like it wasn't just tables with a, you know, the tablecloth over it sitting in a dark corner of a school gymnasium or something like it just felt, it felt like a really different kind of conference more uh, than a camp, but still felt comfortable. I don't know. It was just cool. It was like a good juxtaposition. It's like all around amazing event. All right. I'm glad that you're back and I'm glad that, uh, the plane made it because I, I, I thought maybe you might have gotten a plane. You couldn't find East Troy, Wisconsin. You got lost coming back, but uh, but you're back, and I'm so, glad to have you so, back. And great, great to you I, had a, an, a, an awesome experience at WordCamp EU. I am happy to be back. Uh, the Berlin airport is uh, is an interesting one because it's very small and not air conditioned and a little slow. If I'm gonna say that, like. Security was real slow. Plane was delayed. I guess got to spend some time with Andrea Bishop from Automatic, who I've known for a very long time, um, which is always fun to see Andrea. And uh, Andrea Middleton was on my flight there. There was like, just, I don't know, like lots of cool hanging out with people that uh, like with Jill on the show today is like a, a good couple of weeks of like reminiscing and remembering uh, a lot of the stuff. So it was all good. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of WordPress Weekly, the pre-July 4th celebration that we usually have every year. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody, you can find show notes for this episode and all other episodes on WPTavern.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at Jeffro, J-E-F-F-R-0. And, and John? me at uh, JJJ on uh, GitHub and Twitter and JJJ.blog. All right, so uh, as I say every year, do not put fireworks where they shouldn't go and light them. Do not, uh, you know, practice all safety procedures. And for the love of God, if you've been drinking, stay away. Just go somewhere and watch. Stay away. Yeah. Stay safe. 
And uh, we'll talk to you again next Wednesday afternoon. Everybody enjoy. Hopefully you have a safe and uh, healthy uh, 4th of July weekend. Of course, if you're in the U.S., if you're in the EU, pff, uh, what do you care? So, but uh, <laughs> all right, we'll talk to you again next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Say bye, John. Bye, everybody. Bye, John. <laughs>